Hey what's up guys, how's it going? This is Fergie here, back for another video, and today I'm bringing you guys a video I talked about <clears throat> a couple videos prior, and this is a kind of display showcase of the, I guess the final group dungeon in the game, uh, which is in Cold Harbor called the Vault of Madness. Um, this is about, I want to say level 48 through veteran rank 1, uh, you see a lot of veteran rank 1 people here as that's what happens when you hit level 50. So. Uh, those are the people I'm with, but I'm not that rank yet. So I'm just gonna kind of show you guys the exciting parts. I'm not. This isn't the entire dungeon. I'm gonna try to remove some of the spoilers. I'm not gonna give away the story or anything in it, but um, I just want to show you guys what it's all about. As the group content is a lot of fun in this game, I think it's one of the highlights. And this dungeon, uh, in particular, is really cool. So um, I'm just kind of gonna show some of the the ad fights here, and I, I I switch back and forth between my two builds very often, as you will see. I typically use the bow build on bosses because it's more single target and uh, I have better survivability. I can pay attention to mechanics, I'm not melee, etc. And then in big packs of AoE and adds, um, I'm, I'm usually the opener as a Nightblade. Um, and I had a, another guy in here who was a Nightblade as well, but usually, as I discussed in, a, in the build showcase video, you kind of just hop in and you spam um, steel, steel Tornado and you periodically stealth to keep yourself from getting wrecked after you pull aggro. But here's our first kind of mini boss, and a lot of bosses in this dungeon are just kind of beefed up versions of um, elites you will see dropping from anchors or um, throughout the world, etc. And this one is no different, it's just kind of a beefed up ghost. It doesn't do um, anything very special because it's not actually a boss, I suppose. But um, then we get to this main boss here, and I actually died right off the bat because this fire opens right on the entrance and the exit. But this one is a prime example of, uh, I, I think they're called Harvesters out in the open world, and this one is almost identical, except she's just more powerful, she's stronger. Um, when she shoots that, that wall at you, um, this one of course shoots it all the way around, and it hits harder. Uh, she still puts out those four balls um, that you have to kill to keep from healing her, and the rest is just kind of periodic damage, and she, she, I mean, she hits a little bit harder, etc. She has more health, obviously. But um, as long as you keep those balls from touching her, just like uh, the regular Harvester, she will not heal. Um, you will heal. In a turn, you can get it down pretty fast. Now, that that uh, big wall is dodgeable, obviously, but it takes up half of the room, so it's hard to get out of the way. Uh, one thing I'm still kind of getting used to is roll dodging. And roll dodging helps you get out of the way of a majority of the damaging effects in this game. Um, whether it be most of the time backward or to the side to avoid just about everything, and there she goes. Um, there was also a lot of good loot in this dungeon, so uh, public dungeons are always a good idea um, for not only loot, but you get a skill point, and I just think they're a lot of fun, and they're really cool to watch too. Uh, so here's just more ads. Um, same deal here, Steel Tornado, periodically stealth. I usually open, and that's why stealthing is so important, because I will pull all of the aggro. And I'll die pretty quickly, and the healer cannot heal through all the damage I'm taking. So here's our second boss. Another uh, stronger version of an overworld boss. This one being a uh, Bone Colossus. And this guy is pretty much the same deal as you would see uh, in the overworld. He charges and he, he hits you. Now, Bone Colossus are actually pretty strong. Um, I've been in a majority of instances where... I'm solo questing and have to kill one of these guys, and they'll summon adds, and I will not be able to handle it. So, um, this one being even stronger, I'm glad I had a group, obviously. Uh, these bosses are not soloable in any way, shape, or form, except actually the last one, the Harvester, might actually be um, if you're really on your game. But as you can see there, he charges, he drops those circles um, that you obviously will take damage in. One good thing is if you have your, your um, damage indicators on, which is everything that's red, you know, stay out of this or avoid this, whatnot. It'll make things a lot easier. I have talked to a couple people that actually play with that off. I like, I guess they like it to be a little harder on themselves, but I'm not good enough for that, and I think that's fairly difficult. So um, let, let me talk about what I do with my bow here on boss fights, because you'll see me use the bow in just about every fight. Um, I'll use snipe when they're at a distance. As you can see, he's kind of glitching there, running at that wall. I don't really know what that was, but um, I'll periodically um, keep my dots on him to keep healing myself as well as poison arrow to um, continue doing more damage and then if they're a long ways away I will snipe and if they're getting close I'll use magnum shot that's usually just how it works so I can keep my distance and avoid all of the moves now this guy is interesting um, even though he just looks like a stronger uh, flesh atronach he does this he has this uh, 
passive effect that makes this fire follow random people on the ground. Now, I don't want to say it's follow, but in many instances here, you'll notice that I feel like it is following me. Um, it could just be randomly coded to fall, to just, you know, move around, but um, I feel like it's coming after me the majority of the time, and it hurts quite a bit. One good thing that I'm a dark elf, obviously, I don't take near as much fire damage, but we did have a vampire with us, um, the guy on the top there, so you can see he's getting wrecked pretty hard by it. That's why I still refuse to play a vampire, because I just, there's a lot of fire. A lot of the damage in this game actually comes from fire, and I mean, on this fight, um, besides his melee attack and his big frontal cone, all of the damage is from the fire. So if our, our vampire is standing in that, and you, as you can see, it even hurts me a lot with all my fire resistance, so... If uh, a vampire is standing in something like that for more than, you know, two, three seconds, it's it's going to be the end of the day for them. So I, I I honestly can't advise playing a vampire yet. I'm going to put out a guide about vampires pretty soon here. I'm, I'm going to make a character that's going to be a vampire, but I just um, didn't want to make my main here. Um, I didn't want to do that to him because uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of my fire resistance, and I feel like it's going to make things harder on me. So he's down. Uh, like I said, a lot of good loot. Um, I don't think... I got much that could serve a purpose for me, but um, I believe I get an epic in here somewhere, and I'll, I'll show you guys that when it drops. But uh, here's a a stronger version of a Daedrus. Uh, you see these in Dark Anchors a lot, uh, dropping near the end or as the final boss even, and he goes down extremely quickly. I don't even know if that was considered a boss, but he wasn't very strong at all. Let's see, which one is this now? Okay. So this is an interesting part of the dungeon. Obviously, I'm skipping the the running and kind of the quests and everything, so you guys don't see all that. But this is sort of a gauntlet if you've played other MMOs. Um, so I'm I'm thinking of WoW mostly, um, where you have a dungeon and a long hallway or a staircase or something, and the en enemies will keep coming. Um, and you, in in most instances, you'll want to kill all the enemies and then continue on, but they will keep coming no matter what, so you have to run. And I thought this was a gauntlet at first because they just continuously came. I think there were three or four waves of these things, and um, but eventually it, it slowed down. So this is just going to be a lot of, um, what are they called? The, the soulless people in Cold Harbor, I'm spacing their name, but it's gonna be a lot of those Atronox and uh, Bone Colossuses that'll come at you for a while. This is honestly like five minutes long. Um, and then finally, it will slow down and you can head up the staircase here to the next boss. I think this is it right here. Yeah, so our next boss, um, I feel it, you, you kind of feel like they copy models from the rest of the world, but these models are different. They look cooler. Obviously, the bosses are a lot stronger. Um, I mean, they do very similar things. As you can see, this guy's just a, a stronger watcher. He does the green thing that hits you. He spins around, etc. Which is why another reason I like using my bow because I'm ranged and it's much harder to touch me with anything. But one cool thing about this game in comparison to maybe Skyrim is Skyrim is you know you don't have the 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 skill bar or anything. You just kind of use your weapon and maybe a couple other little magical attacks and shouts and whatnot in Skyrim, but it's mostly just hit so hit stuff until it dies. And uh, this game is very different in the sense that the bosses actually have mechanics and you actually have to pay attention to them or you will end up dying. So I think that's really cool, especially with the group content. You have to work together and really pay attention. So this is my favorite boss in the dungeon. Um, I love how the titans look. They look really badass. Um, and this guy is just a lot bigger a lot stronger and um, he does this thing where he'll jump between random players and he's very powerful. Um, we actually ran this whole dungeon without wiping once. Uh, we got close on that first boss there because two of us, <laughs> including myself, died in that fire. But there's that pounce he does right there. That is extremely hard to uh, dodge unless you're not stupid like me and you're actually using your roll dodge. Um, so I highly advise either getting used to your roll dodge or if you already are used to it then doing that. And I was just um, <laughs> taking a lot of the hits here. He'll do that pounce thing, which does a lot of damage, and then he'll shoot that fire at you, which is easily dodgeable. You can even just strafe out of the way of it, but I just kind of stood there. Sometimes I, I like to get moves off other than move, which is kind of a, a very bad habit, because uh, if you're spamming and not paying attention, you will get killed. So there's a dodge. Um, he's jumping all around the room, and his melee attacks also hurt very much. Um, our tank was doing very well in this dungeon to stay alive, and obviously our healer was as well. Uh, so he actually goes down relatively quickly there. I am taking some more fire. And, um, but that was a very cool boss. Um, I, I really like how the Titans look, and you'll fight a couple of them throughout the, the main story as well as on Anchors and stuff. Now, I just thought this part was cool. I'd show it to you guys. Um, I felt like it was kind of a suicide jump, and it is long as well. Um, so, yeah, that kind of speaks for itself. I'm going to fall into a huge pool here. 
now we're going to head off to our final boss. Now, um, the point of this dungeon is all based around this guy, which is the Mad Architect, and he assembled all this, and he built all of Molag Ball's stuff. Um, so he's kind of the... While Molag Ball is the main villain, this is kind of his right-hand man who builds everything for him. And this is a kind of a stronger version of a shade. Uh, he will periodically summon um, skeletons around him or on random players, and he'll do a couple little... Uh, a couple huge like uh, big purple areas he'll do one outside that you need to stand in to not die and he'll put one on himself that if you do stand in you will die and I was confused because this is my first run and one guy was explaining it to me and I, I didn't understand so I actually almost ended up dying from it but it all worked out so this is the final boss guys um, I'll, I'll kinda let it play out here and you can watch him go down and see what he drops I wanna thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this um, this kind of showcase for this dungeon. Uh, like I said, the group content is a lot of fun in this game, and I highly recommend trying it out. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all later.